Hello everyone and welcome back to the computer vision lectures. This is lecture 2 and in this lecture we are going to talk about how images are formed and a little bit about light. So let's jump into it. Before we go ahead I want to ask you uh, an important question. Think about why is vision difficult? Why is it difficult to understand an image? Let's say you are in a living room and you take a photograph of your living room. You will see in the photograph all the different objects that are lying around in your living room, different people sitting there, what color those objects are. You will be able to see every aspect, the light, the geometric shapes, and the relationships between the objects and it's very easy to understand for humans. So why is it so difficult? It is important to know that computer vision usually works uh, it's it's is an inverse uh, in inverse problem domain. What do I mean by inverse problem domain? In inverse problems, you are you are given a, an image or a signal from a real world image from real world, and you have to infer different characteristics of that object from the real world. For example, geometrical properties like two uh, D shape, size, things like that. And also you have to infer appearances, 3D information from images, and so on and so forth. What the problem is that there is not enough information here. Why do we say that we don't have enough information? Because we just have only single image. And from that we have to infer all these characteristics of the real world. So it becomes a, very, a bit difficult uh, in terms of crunching numbers. Another problem is that we don't have uh, most of the problems in computer vision are ill-posed problems. What, do, what I mean by ill-posed problems is that there are insufficient examples to match the unknowns that are present in the problem. Let's look at a previous example of the real world image. This is a known entity that we have. From this we have to infer a lot of different aspects as we saw in the previous slide. And these are the unknowns and there are a lot more unknowns. This is a very rough approximation of this ill-posedness of uh, computer vision problems. It does not necessarily mean that it is going to be like this every time. So before you jump into any problem of computer vision, you have to really study what aspects of the problem are available, what prior knowledge you already have, what assumptions you can make, what constraints uh, have to be added like physical geometrical constraints and then you can go ahead and then you will know or have a better understanding of what exact uh, unknowns you need to be inferring. Okay, so let's move on to uh, ask ourselves what is an image really? For us an image could be uh, random values between uh, 0 to 255 um, uh, and a matrix of those values and you see that those values in an in a array or in an image form and then that's an image for you. But does it really that easy? Is it that simple? How many values can it take? How many values can one pixel take? For example, when you generate a random image of random values, it can look something like this. But do you really consider this as an image? I don't think so. So what, what's the problem here? Let's look at some a bit more details of the image. When you take a, in a, a, a when you take an image of 256 by 256 pixels, every pixel given that it stores 8 bit uh, given that it stores values in it in, in an 8 bit format it can take up to 256 values so there are almost 256 raised to 65536 values or possible combinations for generating an image of 256 cross 256 dimension and it's absolutely huge number in terms of uh, megabytes or gigabytes it's it's impractical to store all those images in one place. So what does computer vision do? Computer vision is trying to make sense of this high dimensional noise. And in all those noise, there are some patterns which are interesting for us, like images, like the one image that we saw of Eiffel Tower in the beginning. If you select specific values of each and every pixel, then you can generate this kind of images, but it's impractical, right? So computer vision only deals with a subspace of those, all those combinations possible. Remember, 
the dimensionality that we discussed is only for 256 cross 256 sized images. In, in practice, when we are doing deep learning or com uh, convolutional neural networks or when we are analyzing any computer vision problem, depending on what domain you are working in, the image size could be huge. For example, in hyperspectral imaging, for example, in medical domain, uh, medical imaging, the image sizes are immense. They are in the in the ranges of thousands cross thousands. So, if you think about the image sizes in those domains, and you uh, assume the minimum um, eight bit uh, to represent any given value, then the then then the possible combinations uh, increase exponentially. So it becomes really impractical. And therefore, we focus on low dimensional uh, values. We extract only the natural images that are interest for us and then we work on those. And we try to make or model those uh, images or those um, features to understand what is happening in the image. When you look at an image, uh, what do you mean by a pixel? A pixel is the minimum smallest form of image representation. A combination of or a collection of such pixels gives you an image. For example here, any point between this, um, this is a two dimensional image, it's a random image. If you take the minimum um, quanta of this image, it is called pixel and a value at that pixel represents the intensity of the color uh, that you're viewing. Um, we can also think of image as a 2D sampling of signals. How? Signal usually are functions that depend on continuous variables in real life. For example, temperature, for example, density, for example, gravity. It could be anything. And they have some physical meaning. Those are signals. Image can be viewed as a sampling of that function, of those signals. Let's say we have a signal in 2D, dom 2D uh, domain, uh, two-dimensional signal. When we sample that two-dimensional signal, we generate an image. Usually in two dimensions, they are spatial coordinates, x and y, which represents the distances in x and y direction. If you add another dimension to it, like time, and you successively generate these uh, images, then you get a video. And brightness is the value of a particular pixel at that particular moment and uh, space. So if you have an image, if you locate a pixel in the image, the intensity value at that pixel will give you the brightness uh, of that pixel. As I said before, signal could be anything, temperature, pressure, depth, all this uh, are physical quantities. That, we, we, that are present in the natural world. And an image is a coarse representation of those continuous values. These are some examples of uh, 2D images. A is a natural image. It's just a small animal who is playing. B is a thermal image. So it is not natural. What values here we see are temperature values located in every pixel location. So when you when this picture was taken, it was taken with a thermal sensor. And every pixel value represents a thermal or temperature of that location in the image. C is an ultrasound image. So when you have, a, when you want to measure ultrasonic waves, this is how you generate, this is how you, how it looks as in an image form. And D is a is a functional MRI of uh, of uh, brain uh, of blood flow in the brain. You inject the blood with certain um, trackers, certain dye trackers, and when you do a functional MRI, you can you are able to see different um, highlights of uh, different parts of the brain where the dye gets stuck. Okay, how do we do sampling? How do we do it in one domain, uh, one dimensional? We take a function and we return a vector of 
uh, values we take fixed time durations or variable time durations and measure the value of that function at that time and we generate a vector and that is basically simply a sampling of one dimensional signal for example here you can see that this is a continuous uh, signal and we choose certain time points here and we take those values like this and it generates a vector of values of those uh, of those time of those moments in time and that is how we are sampling one dimensional signal similarly uh, we do it in uh, two dimension we take uh, instead of vector of values it, we will get a, a matrix of values uh, this is a three dimensional this is this is a three dimensional view of uh, brightness or intensity values for a two dimensional image for every location uh, in the image of x and y this axis represents how much intensity that particular location in the image has and that's how we see this is a basic representation of a grayscale image in 3d now we have learned how we are able to generate uh, images from uh, real world signals continuous signals physical signals and so when we have uh, a, a photograph of let's say this is a photograph of a uh, aerial view of a fr from a satellite of some area for every pixel here or every location in this uh, photograph the value that is represented by i x comma y represents the intensity of this pixel at this location and therefore we make the connection between in the beginning when i showed you what a pixel is now you can understand now you have a better understanding of how that value was captured how is light capture so that's the next question that comes to the mind right so there is a lot of signals out there how do you capture those values what is the process involved so we take a look at that uh, we know the illumination source usually it is sun if you are outside the house or if you are inside the uh, house you have your light bulbs or different various electric sources that generate light and you know that this is the source which, which generates light and it is um, throwing light in all direction uh, and this is our scene element uh, we are assuming one any any, any element here and it, it could be any object the illumination source generates lights which is incident on the scene element and there are and it, and it reflects the light in all directions now our imaging system here it captures the light coming from this particular direction and records those intensity values in a sensor array that is present at the back of the imaging system these sensor arrays could be uh, we will talk about them later as well how these are arranged and how uh, they are able to capture uh, color values also but currently let's just go ahead with saying that it it, it captures only uh, fixed values in a 2d matrix and at the end we are able to see an output image with those values in uh, every pixel location this is how uh, integration of light happens over different angles now if you move this imaging system around this object you will be able to capture the scene element with different variations in intensity and reflectances of this light will change because um, any object is not if the object is not uniform and the sources are varied then you will be able to capture different kind of matrix values if you move around your imaging system around your scene and so light usually is captured in this form and stored by the cameras as a matrix of intensity values uh, what is quantization quantization is basically a um, conversion of real valued function into integer values or into a fixed values fixed formats which we can store in computers what happens is let's say for example this is a um, this is the image that we generated and when we go from point a to point b this is the intensity profile that uh, shows at every point along this line segment what is the intensity value of uh, of this image and we get uh, and and when we sample this intensity values 
we are able to uh, store them in a fixed uh, format like for example 8 bit or 16 bit and depending on that right now here this is the quantization levels that we have selected it's a um, it's a combination of eight different values and therefore for every point it will only store um, a fixed value of uh, a value one of those one of the values from this quantization levels so your quantization level decides how much intense uh, how much um, dynamic range you have for your intensity values so when you look at this process you can easily imagine that quantization is lossy because once you capture these values it is difficult to go back to the original real valued image this is in contrast quantization is in contrast to sampling because quantization signal cannot be reconstructed whereas uh, if you are uh, doing sampling with a proper time interval it can be reconstructed uh, in simple quantization uh, basic level quantization uh, it uses uh, step size of uniform values but you can have different values depending on your problem domain Uh, there are some quantization effects. One of them uh, is radiometric resolution. So what happens with radiometric resolution? As we said in the beginning, if you have an 8-bit uh, level of quantization, uh, it can store up to 256 uh, levels. So when you have 8-bit values to store, there are 256 combinations possible and therefore you get this kind of image. Sorry, uh, therefore you get this kind of image uh, when you store it. But let's say you decrease the level of quantization. When you decrease it to 4 bit, to 2 bit, to 1 bit, 1 bit is essentially either white or black. And so when you store those values, you can see the loss in information that is happening from higher quantization levels to lower quantization. This kind of effect is called radiometric resolution effect. Um, what kind of issues might also cause might also be caused with uh, different geometry uh, different kind of resolutions for example geometric versus spatial, uh, spatial resolution uh, geometric resolution is sensors ability to resolve an image per given pixel okay so depending on the sensor array that you have uh, it is how how effectively is it able to resolve that value and store it into its sensor is called uh, geometric resolution Whereas spatial resolution is simply the number of pixels that you have in your image. These two are images of the same pixel values. However, the first one was uh, is uh, was taken by a geometric uh, is, is a geometric resolution, and the sensor array when they were arranged, they were overlapping, and because of that, we gen we get a blurry image. This is the basic difference between geometric and spatial resolution. So. In this lecture, we saw how light interacts with the real world and how we are able to capture that signal into a discrete form in the form of an image. In the next lecture, we will see more about colors and color spaces. Thank you.